Hello, my name is Edson Andrade and I am one of the developers of Atlips Solids Interaction Tool for Revit. With this entirely free tool, you can perform join, cut, switch join order operations with multiple elements in Revit, as well as checks for intersections, joined elements, cut possibilities, and actual cutting between elements. Also, Solids gives you a lot of tools in order to improve your viewing and selection of elements in the model prior to executing the operations you need. So let's see all of this in action. We have this 3D section in a building project in Revit and as you can see, there's a lot of interferences between elements of the architecture model, such as walls and floors, and elements of the structure model such as columns, framing, and slabs. Let's start by doing something very straightforward. We can try to use the command for multiple joints to solve the conflict between the structural framing and the walls. We're going to start solids by clicking on its icon in the Addings ribbon tab in Revit. Now, we simply need to Select the Structural Framing category on the drop-down box to our left. Select the Walls category on the drop-down box on the right side. Check for intersections between these groups of elements. And hit the Join command. Notice that now all structural framing elements in the model effectively cut the geometry of intersecting walls. But this was only a quick example on how solids can be simple to use. Now I'm going to show you more detailed operations trying to showcase the essential features solids can offer to your workflow. Let's start by working on the columns. With the option All in Category checked, we search for the Structural Columns category in the drop-down box and use the Select button to retrieve all structural columns in the model. You will notice that all selected elements are listed in the left grid and also highlighted in the Revit model. You can manually check or uncheck all or specific listed elements, thus changing the highlighting of these elements in Revit as well. Also notice that the operations buttons are initially grayed out, disabled. That's because every solid operation demands a previous and respective check. The goal here is giving you options while saving your computer and your time from useless and redundant processing. So, in order to make a join operation, we need first an intersection check. To make an unjoin or a switch join order operation, we need a check for already joined elements. And you got the idea. So, in order to join our columns to other elements, we need to check for intersections between these columns and the elements of a chosen category. We can even try checking for interacting elements of any category. However, this is not recommended if it's not necessary. Let's check for the walls in intersection with the columns. Notice that for each column listed in the left grid, we have now a group of intersecting walls listed in the right grid. The elements in this interacting list can also be checked and unchecked. Let's leave every column and wall element checked. Thus highlighting every one of them in the model. 
Solids also gives you a set of visualization tools. Once we have any checked elements in the list, we can isolate, hide or unhide them in Revit viewport. Let's isolate the checked element. Then let's uncheck those elements for a better viewing and see that the Revit viewport now only shows us the isolated elements, columns and walls in intersection. This automatic highlighting process happens because the toggle selection button is enabled. Every time you perform a select or a check process, solids can highlight, isolate, hide or unhide all elements in the resulting list. You can set this by using the toggle buttons below each grid. So let's prevent solids from highlighting elements on every selecting and checking process by disabling the respective toggle buttons. Once we have done an intersection check, the join operation button gets enabled. So let's perform this operation. Notice that now all selected columns cut their respective intersecting walls. And now, for example, you can perform an unjoin operation, if you will. But let's keep them joined and perform another check. This time we want to check for intersections between structural columns and floors. But the elements of this last category are not visible in Revit right now. Let's toggle the unhide button and perform the check. Awesome! Solids retrieved all intersecting floors, not only in the list, but also in the Revit viewport. Now, let's join them. In the current join order, the floors are cutting the columns, but we expect it the other way around. This problem can be easily solved with solids. Let's use the switch operation button to switch the join order between all these elements. Great, that's the right join order. Now, let's search for other interactions between elements. But first, we need to reset the view so we can see all the elements in our section box again. Solids gives you some resetting tools. These tools can reset the lists as well as the highlighting, hiding and isolation of elements. Let's use the second one to reset the view in Revit, clearing any current hiding or isolation of elements. We can see now, for example, that there are problems between some walls and concrete slabs. Let's select the slabs first. Solids can identify if your floor or wall element has the structural parameter checked or not. So let's choose the structural floor category. Good, now let's check for the intersecting walls. There you go. Now we just need to join them. Great. After performing this same process with all intersecting elements, we can deliver a much more accurate model, now reliable for quantity takeoff and beam 5D workflows. The same logic can be used for the other checks and operations. Now let me show you some more features that Solids has to offer. As we can see in a full 3D view, the architecture model visually has some horizontal lines dividing its external walls. One of the proper ways to get rid of them is by joining these adjacent walls. Let's see how to work with only the external walls. First, we select all elements in walls category.
This returns a list with 327 walls. You probably have already noticed that Solids displays the element's ID, family name and family type. Once the sorting of elements is done, first by their family name and then by their family type, let's check all the elements in the list and then select and uncheck all the elements whose family type is not an external wall. We can use the control or the shift key to help us with this task. Once only the external walls are checked, we use the filter tool, which is also available for the interacting list as well, to limit the selected elements list to these checked elements. Now our list dropped to 117 elements. Let's say we want to use this set of elements in future checkings. We can store the current selected elements in the saved selection set. A list of elements that will be available for loading the list of selected elements at any time. By default, Solids only allows join operations between elements in actual intersection. Once we want to join adjacent walls, we need to enable the adjacent elements modifier. The intersection check now returns adjacent elements, in addition to the intersecting ones, but this is not exactly what we want. Notice that we have some internal walls, which are indeed intersecting or adjacent to the selected external walls, but we don't want them in this operation. We want to limit the interacting results to external walls once again. In other words, we want to limit the results to the same list of external walls we stored in the saved selection set. We just need to enable the saved selection locking. This feature will limit the checking results to the elements stored in the saved selection set. Let's try it. There you go. Although we have a long list, we can see that only external walls are listed. We can now perform the join operation. Awesome. Not a single line between the external walls anymore. Now, let's see another useful tool. Let's say we want to work with a set of selected elements that we already have selected in Revit. For example, we can manually select all elements in the top levels of the project in the Revit viewport. In Solids, we can check the selection from Revit option, and if we choose all categories in the drop-down box, Solids will list every element highlighted by our manual selection. But let's say we want only the walls out of this selection. We can choose Walls instead in the drop-down box, and finally hit Select. It's done. Solids filtered our selection. One more useful tool. Solids has a modifier for allowing or disallowing the joining at starts and ends of structural framing elements. Let's demonstrate this. First, we are going to check for columns which are joined to this structural framing. Now, we will try to unjoin all of them. Notice that the columns that cross the middle of framing elements were indeed unjoined, but the columns at the ends of framing elements were not.
Let's run a new check for joint columns. But this time we will enable the allow disallow join for structural framing modifier prior to perform the unjoin operation. Now we can see that even the columns at the ends of framing elements have been unjoined. Well, these were some of the features you will find in Solids, an entirely free tool for Solids operations in Revit. If you have any doubt while you're using this add-in, you can always hover your mouse cursor over any of the active commands for some useful tooltips on how to use them. Or you can send us an email for more direct questions, suggestions, comments and reports. You can download Solids through the Atlips website or directly from the Autodesk App Store. We hope we can help you to solve problems and be more productive. Thank you very much for watching.